Pida Velupilai Prabakaran Makale Nalia Medinam or Mahatana Nal. The amount of popular support for his guerrillas is hard to assess. But these pictures of a May Day rally this year, broadcast by the Tigers, show an apparently genuine and enthusiastic support among thousands of Jaffna people. Within a month, the Tigers' claim to control Jaffna was put to its severest test. On the 26th of last month, the Sri Lankan armed forces launched a massive scale operation in this area called Varamarachi, the northern tip of the peninsula. About four to 5,000 troops, uh, supported by artillery and motor fire, with massive aerial cover, moved into these areas from different strategic locations. And within a few days, they have uh, captured important strategic towns. And, uh, the entire area was brought under their control. The tragic uh, aspect of the whole operation was that uh, between 500 to 1,000 innocent civilians were senselessly slaughtered by indiscriminate aerial bombardment and artillery shelling. There is complete disagreement between the Tamils and the army, which is 95% Sinhalese, about the scale of civilian casualties. The military are adamant that they minimized civilian suffering. We had to avoid the civilians as much as we could, but uh, in spite of it all, I think there were about uh, 46, 47 civilians killed and uh, about another 180, 200 uh, injured. the opening shots of the battle for Jaffna, captured by the Tiger's own camera. The pictures show government planes rocketing and bombing the peninsula. The rebels say that many of their targets were civilian, and they produce photographs of the dead and injured in the Jaffna hospital. Air and artillery strikes had already caused extensive damage to the hospital in previous battles. But the government dismisses Tamil claims that the armed forces attacked civilian targets the army would not deliberately and intentionally drop any bombs on civilian areas, but where they have felt that the militants are fortified in bunkers and other such type uh, situations, and uh, carrying out campaigns against the government and the civilians who are opposed to them, the military may have, though I'm not advised on this, uh, resorted to uh, aerial bombing. But there's considerable evidence that they've hit civilian targets. The hospital has been, uh, Jaffna has had, has, has had a great deal of aerial damage. That can't be justified in any strictly mi military sense. Well, uh, I wouldn't try to justify it myself, but uh, where there is a virtual but war It's, war it's done in the on, name of your government. Uh, it's done in the name of uh, a government. There's no, no doubt about that and the government does not take uh, refuge to and s try to justify it. Uh, all that I can say as a minister in the government is that there is a real situation where a group of people are trying to create a separate state and holding their own people in terrorism and the government has to take action. It was here, in the refugee camps of South India, that evidence about the scale of civilian suffering began to accumulate. This is Mandapam camp, the emergency centre for new arrivals. Indian refugee officials said 150 people a day had started coming from the war zone, fleeing across the open sea in tiny boats, abandoning homes, fields and work. It's by now a well-travelled route. 150,000 Tamils have escaped from Sri Lanka since the worst troubles began in 1983. This woman's husband fled two years ago when the army started rounding up young men. Today, she's got her own reasons for joining the exodus. I can't live there with this constant threat. Even if we go to a safer place, they still come and drop bombs. They drop leaflets from the helicopters, instructing the civilians to assemble in the temples. But they drop bombs on those very same temples. 
No. No, that is incorrect. I'm aware that some civilians got, in, uh, got injured in a temple. If you know, uh, I don't know whether you've been briefed on this, there were 11 places where we told the civilians to gather. And that was printed out, distributed in leaflets, came on the radio, and all those 11 places were untouched. This man and his family gave more detail about the air attacks. Even now, they are dropping firebombs from Avro transport planes on the houses. These firebombs are barrels filled with petrol. Most of the houses are burned to ashes by these firebombs. We were lucky to escape. This hospital at Puloli in the Vadamarachi Strip bears out the refugees' story. The survivors of an air attack on a temple, ten women and children in this ward, six men in another, are being treated for serious burns. 25 people died in this incident alone. This 23-year-old woman was eight months pregnant when the firebomb hit her. She lost her baby. We took refuge inside the temple. While we were there, a big plane dropped a huge firebomb on the temple. We ran away from there and it fell amongst us. It was like a huge fireball. It was a fire bomb. The first bomb dropped at the rear of the temple. So we ran out of there to take cover somewhere else. But they chased us and dropped a second bomb among us. This woman talked of something even more serious. Chemicals had been added to the blazing fuel to make it stick to people's flesh. It was a kind of rubber and plastic substance, which was a red and blue color. It stuck on my child's head. It was removed at the hospital. Why did you go to the temple? What were you doing there? The forces dropped leaflets from the helicopters, instructing us to take shelter in the temple. I feared that if I remained in the house, I'd be attacked. I thought it would be safer if I went to the temple. Oh, no, no. Uh, you see, as I said earlier, uh, we are very clear about civilian casualties. And uh, there were unfortunately civilian casualties. Many of the burns were due to a uh, large number of uh, places where wherever the terrorists were having their hideouts, having barrels and barrels of diesel and petrol. And when we destroyed them, when, sometimes when you shoot at them, what happens is the whole thing goes up in flames. You're saying that the, the Tikhan temple in which these people claim they were firebombed, they weren't advised to go to? No, no. And they weren't bombed by the air with inflammable material? In any case, no temple was bombed by the air. That I'm positive about. We've seen pictures of such temples. You would have, as I said, there were certain temples that got damaged in the, in the fight. And some of them went up in flames uh, in many places where they had large number of explosive devices, either buried or uh, uh, piled up. At the hospital, some of the medical staff were prepared to confirm in private what the patients had told us. Others were afraid to talk. Doctor, can you tell us on behalf of the hospital how many of these cases you've treated in the last few weeks? I am sorry, I am unable to make any press statement regarding this because the regulations saying that government servants should not make any press statements have been reinforced recently. The offensive started on May the 26th and lasted 10 days, giving the military control of the key Vadamarachi strip. But most of the northern peninsula, including the town of Jaffna itself, is still in Tiger hands. This is the new front line. Kankasanturai was once a prosperous coastal town. It took a heavy beating in the offensive. Young men who remained were rounded up by the army and more than a thousand families fled. The town they left behind is suffering once more to protect military gains. Soldiers are creating a no man's land to keep the tigers at bay. How are you managing to clear away the houses that are built of brick? No, in fact, we are not going to break the houses because we can't afford to break it because these people have to come back one day. Right. But things like uh, Kajan huts, mm. it has to be cleared. I heard some uh, dynamiting as we came in. What was happening That's there? Good. No, those are there certain places that we cannot be helped. It has to be open. 
When the troops moved in, thousands fled. Most moved to Tamil areas of Sri Lanka away from the fighting, but some made it across the sea here to India. They brought few possessions, but most carried with them stories of suffering, and some allegations of atrocities at the hands of Sinhalese troops. What have the soldiers been doing? They have taken the women away, and they have taken the boys above the age of 12 to the army camps. The soldiers have been breaking bottles and scattering the glass on the floor and ordering the prisoners to roll over on the broken glass. What have the soldiers been doing? They have been raping women. I have seen about 20 such cases of rape victims who were dead. The bodies bear the scars of bitten lips and cheeks. Some bodies were naked, some of their limbs chopped off. I have seen their partially burnt bodies. Have the soldiers come into your village? Yes, to Lalo. What did they do in the village? They came to take away the women. We were very frightened. They pushed the children away and took the women. Where did they take the women? They took them and raped them, even if they were pregnant. That is why I came in the boat, for the sake of my child. Have the tigers been fighting back against the soldiers? Yes, but the army, when they were advancing, marched the civilians in front of them to make a human shield. The Sri Lankan government says their action is to liberate you from the militants. Do you agree with that? They say they are, but actually they're dropping bombs on the very people they say they're trying to liberate. How can we trust them when we see them killing innocent people indiscriminately? Many people were killed. We came to India to save our lives. Would you go back to Sri Lanka if the tigers are beaten and pushed out of Jaffna? There have been widespread complaints too, mainly emanating from India, that there have been atrocities committed by your troops. No, that I would never allow, never allow. And as I told you earlier, we have, uh, I have made it a point to motivate, educate, the soldiers on the kind of operation You said, you said earlier that too there had been mistakes, there had been errors for which you were sorry. Is it not possible they are continuing? No, no. There may have been the odd mistake here and there, but certainly not. Certainly not. Because I wouldn't undertake an operation if uh, I'm going to allow troops to behave any way they like. It would be too innocent on our part to pretend that the army on some occasions may not have run berserk. But our whole effort during the last three years is to give a degree of professionalism to an army which has never faced this sort of situation. And, and all the foreign training that we have tried to get is for the purpose of disciplining them. And I think that the GOC, the army commander, would have told you that we see increasingly less and less, almost to the extent of there being no incidents where the army goes and runs berserk today. For the moment, Operation Liberation stops here. But there's little agreement over what it has achieved. The military campaign was very limited in its nature to establish government control in areas where there would be minimal civilian casualties, if at all, and to give a signal to the terrorists and to the militants, that if they are thinking in terms of a military solution, that the government forces were superior, that the government can take control of the area completely. The recent offensive against Jaff Jaffna was, was a, an act of grave irresponsibility on the part of the government. It was an assault which would have had incalculable consequences for the prospects of ethnic reconciliation in this country, it would have, would have set back ethnic reconciliation in the near future. Stalemate at Jaffna. The town is still in the hands of the Tigers. The army are here, but they're bottled up in an old colonial fort. They seldom move out and spend their time instead in training. But the government has just announced it will hold by-elections here. To do so effectively, it would have to launch another assault to capture the town and its 85,000 population. The army is confident it could do so if ordered by State President Jayawadina. I know that we can go out if we want to. And uh, uh, subject to the GOC giving the orders, we can do it. But you have confidence that you could rest touch Jaffna from the Tigers' control? No problem at all. No problem at all. If Sri Lanka is prepared to wipe out the entire population of the Jaffna town, 
and inflict uh, civilian casualties in a higher degree, then it may be possible. But at the same time, even if we are defeated, even if Jaffna is taken over, we can <coughs> move on to other areas and consolidate our positions. So Jawadna's strategy is not going to work if he assumes that the fall of Jaffna will put an end to the resistance movement, he is sadly mistaken. Uh, the objective of the government was essentially to break the backbone of Tamil resistance. History tells us that the hearts and minds of people cannot in such a way be subjugated. I think the attempt by this government to launch this offensive was then gravely flawed by a fundamental assumption that the struggle for people, for human values, could be somehow contained by repressive means.